Hi, Sandra here from Creative Spain. Oops, <laughs> things falling around on my desk. Uh, today I wanted to do a video for you on making your own polymer stamps. I've made several videos and I'm always refining the process and I've come across something that's just made it a little bit easier, so I thought I'd show you that. But I wanted to show you the process from start to finish as much as I can do. But the only thing I can't show you really is the washout process because I need to do that in the bathroom next door. So apart from that, you'll see pretty much everything. Things that you'll need. A UV lamp such as this. I use mine with only two bulbs in it, not the four. The reason I use it with two? Well, first of all, it started off by accident because two of my bulbs blew on me. And then I discovered that it's far easier to do it with two than it is with four. So I've kept it down to two. There we go. You will also need some UV polymer gel. This stuff is available for purchase. Um, you can get it delivered, which is what I do, or at least my husband does, because I got him to get me some more for Christmas. And this is clear, colourless gel. And it's the same brand that I've been using for quite a while now. The only difference between that and the stuff I'm going to be using today is the fact that this has been decanted into an old shampoo bottle for ease of pouring. This gel is very viscous and very, very sticky. You know, I'm talking really, really sticky. You wouldn't want to get this in your hair. You'd never get out again. It is extremely sticky stuff and therefore you need to try and make it as easy to pour as humanly possible. And I store mine upside down in an old spray can paint lid thing. So what else we need? You need a couple of pieces of glass. Now I got this cut by our local uh, window <laughs> installer. As far as I know, it's just perfectly normal glass. I got it cut into 14 centimeter squares. And on one piece, I've put a few of these little plastic bumps as spacers around the edge. I'm going to use this as my base for reasons that will become apparent. My negative, if you like, is cut out of a very, very good black vinyl. This stuff is extremely sticky and it's very tough but it cuts beautifully and that's why I use it. It's far easier for me to get than any of the proper negative making equipment would be. So I use this and it's fine. You will also need some craft foam or some spacers of some description. I use craft foam and this is just some bits that I had left over from other projects. All I've done with this is use one of these runners on it. Generally speaking, I put double-sided tape on in big sheets and then I cut them all up. But I'd run out, so I just use that instead. You will need washing up liquid and some reasonably hot water. You'll need an accurate timer. I use my phone. And you're going to need some cling film. Um, this is a newer development of mine. And it comes in very handy, believe me. So assuming that you have your negative made and make sure when you're doing a stamp, it is a negative. The bits that you can see, the writing here is what's going to make the stamp and all this bit won't. So that's going to go in the middle of there. Now what I did previously was tape this down and then put my damming around. However, what I'm going to do instead is to put a piece of cling film over the top. Now my dispenser isn't particularly brilliant, so I'm going to cut this cling film. Always find cling film tends to tear rather than cut properly. So I'm just going to take it and stretch it over and pull it so it's nice and flat. Only over the one side. I don't want to wrap it around the back, okay? Just the one side. If you wanted to, you could get a roller and roller it to make sure it's flat. Now that overall the lettering is flat, so I'm happy with that. 
and I'll just cut off the excess and I can use the other piece for something else. Now I need to make my dam. Normally I tend to go around in like wavy lines and things when I'm doing my damming but because I've got this uh, cling film on there I can't do that because it will shift. So I'm just going to put it where it needs to go around my image. You want to have a little gap around your lettering but you can make it a strange shape if you want to. There's no rule that says it has to be you know a pure rectangle and you can put a tiny little gap for any excess liquid to run through there if you wish you don't have to but you can if you don't do it and you've got too much it'll just run over the top and another piece there there we go wow wasn't that hard all right now i need to get my gel and you need to fill it so that it's sort of like three quarters full. It's very viscous, so it's not going to run out of the bottle, which is one of the reasons why I keep it upside down. And just going to check you can see this. Yeah, you can. All right. And so it just oozes out. And you want to put it one line over another line so you don't get gaps preferably and preferably you want to try and make sure you don't get a load of air bubbles in it as well there we go and I just rub it on the edge to close it off and put my cap back on and so I use an old shampoo bottle a black shampoo bottle and that seems to work fine So if you have any bubbles in it, you want to get rid of the bubbles if they're on the bottom surface. A bubble on the top isn't so drastic, but you don't want them on the bottom, particularly around your lettering. Definitely don't want it on the lettering, if you can possibly help it. Okay, so that's that. And the other thing I forgot to mention you need is a piece of plastic now i buy these like little document folders that have got like the thumb holes in and i just cut those up for this because i can get quite a few pieces out of one document folder and it's easy for me to get hold of i've cut a generous size because if this goes anywhere else i don't want the cleanup hassle so put it over the middle and let it go down and then take your other piece of glass, turn it so the bumps are on the bottom. They're just acting as spacers. And press down just gently, not hard, just gently, to make sure that the gel goes into the edges and it is nice and even. Now I'm going to put this into my UV lamp. Technology, isn't it wonderful? And I move this over here you should be able to see I have my phone I have my UV lamp and now I'm going to press both of them at the same time there we go and it will count down now this is doing the floor of the stamp the bit that goes onto your stamp block and what you have to do when you're making a stamp is you have to get a reasonable floor on it so that it holds all your letters or design together but not so much floor that you end up with no stamp at all because it's completely solid and that does tend to vary from the time of the year temperature of the house temperature of the liquid how much you've used your lamp <laughs> It's not a precise number, so what suits me may not suit you. And it's very much a case of trial and error until you get it right. And I have a notepad and I note down all my different timings, what I've used and when I've Five, used it. Four, three, two, one. OK, switch my lamp off and go for my other timer which is set to two minutes and 20 seconds turn this over 
put it under the lamp and switch on. There we go. So this is now the bit that is going to do the lettering. And said so mindset for two minutes twenty. If you have a very fine design with very very thin lines, you might need to increase the time. You'd think that you know the time would be decreased, but it isn't because there is less UV light getting through. It needs to have a slightly longer time in order to get down to the base and cure properly. So that's the reasoning behind that. What I haven't done is any photographic type stamps because I'm really not into that. So I just use it for, you know, cartoon type stamps and various images, patterns, flowers, sentiments, all that sort of thing. It is certainly easier to do things like flowers than it is to get good sentiments because you have to be so very, very careful on the timing. I wonder why my timer is missing out the number four. Right, move this to one side and you can see this is what's coming out. And lo and behold, all you have to do is separate the two pieces. And this is where the cling film has come in handy. There is no mess. I can peel this away. I can peel one bit away from the other bit. <laughs> Usually it all comes off on the cling film, this time it hasn't. Probably because that only had the temporary sticky stuff. It normally comes off. All right. Now I have to go take this to the bathroom and give it a good scrub. Right, so I've scrubbed it clean and this is what I'm left with. And out of there. I don't know if you can see it easily, but there's like a floor around the images and then I have the lettering. Now this isn't hard enough yet to use as a stamp. And what you're supposed to do is to put it in just covered with some cool water, then put it back under your lamp for a few minutes. Now how long you want to leave it under there depends on personal preference. I tend to give it at least three minutes and then what I have done in the past is put a whole group of stamps into a larger container because obviously I can't get this size under there. Do a whole group of them and just leave it outside in the sunshine covered with half a centimeter or so of water. Just leave it out in the sunshine and that helps to toughen them up. Now if they are still a little too sticky then you can put them back under the UV lamp again. So that's it. That's how you make it. And in a few minutes, I will come back and I will actually stamp the image that we've just made so that you can see the result. So here we are. Here is the result of the stamp that I made earlier. This is the actual stamp. I have trimmed it down so that it is uh, fairly close to the lettering. Hopefully you can see that. It's a bit difficult to see because it's colourless and transparent. And what we do is put it onto your stamp block. And just to show you, that was the stamp that I was using. There we go. And I said any vague uh, sort of imprint is simply because I wasn't taking too much care about stamping it. Let's do it again. It's difficult to do at arm's length, I find. Okay, put it down here and press properly that time. There we go. Give it a try, you might thoroughly enjoy yourself. While I think about it, I'll show you what I use for cleaning my stamps. I know I picked up a wipe just now and used it, but that's just like it's on my desk. I reach for it. I use this, which is a type of, it feels almost like a latex. I'm not sure exactly what it is, um, but they are household cleaning type cloths. It comes as a relatively large cloth and I just cut it up into smaller pieces and just dampen it. It goes hard when it's dry. 
but it has no nap on it. There's no fibres to come off onto your stamps. And because these stamps are very sticky, if you use a cloth with fibres, they'll just adhere to it and that's it. So I keep going with this. It doesn't matter that it's stained. It's perfectly all right. And it keeps my stamps nice and clean. Okay, there we are. Thanks so much for watching. Take care now. Bye-bye.